Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophynet, the babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Last time we took out Eldane and his final band of Squoyatel, uh, although I think there might still be a few left in these woods. But uh, we also got a lot of resources last time, so I do want to create one more upgrade. So I'm going to upgrade, where is it here? In the training grounds, the Herald's Study, so we get two recruits after every battle won, which only takes 750 wood, because of course wood is still our biggest problem, biggest resource problem. So I'm hoping we can uh, start using those excess gold and recruits for something else later on, so to maybe replace that with... Uh, there we go. We get a new Herald study in the training grounds. Uh, just to get ourselves something... Uh, a bit of wood out of it. Ah, no. We, could, we I actually never checked out the training grounds. You can actually play against AI there. Then we got one more report. A letter found on Eldane. Eldane, via Imperial Emissaries, we've made contact with a commando operating on Temerian soil, led by a certain Yorvet. He is willing to coordinate his campaign against human regimes with our forces and awaits further information. We should send word to him as soon as we deal with the Lyrian company. No, Noel? Noel? Something like that. So your vet is of course the leader of the Scoitel you fight uh, against in The Witcher 2. Which is of course a nice tie-in. Uh, has anything changed in the mess stand? Yes. No. I must go. We'll... I wonder, I wonder if Rayla was going to tell us something, but apparently not, so... Okay, moving on. Just going to check out the map, because I don't really know where to go next now, because we can go over there on the west side, but I feel like we haven't seen anything over here just yet. So I'm going to go there first, because everything else just loops around, and this is where we eventually need to go. Towards uh, Ethern. I don't know which city this is going to be. Because Ethern is of course the, the, the land. The country so to speak. Uh, but we can do either way it looks like. Although if we want to stay on this side of the river here. We're going to want to check out these areas first. So let's head to the east for now. Okay we get to another trap. Like Milady, our soldiers found a merchant at the bottom of a pitfall. He's in a poor state with extensive wounds. And a high fever. What shall we do with him? Escort him to the nearest village and offer coin for his treatment. Escort him to the nearest village and requisition his wares as compensation. Uh, but we get morale from the top one. I would love the bit of wood. Damn, I would love the bit of wood. But we don't get morale if we do that. Um, I'm going to go for the wood. So, escort him to the nearest village and requisition his wares as compensation. There we go. And we get the second part of the artifact compression cards. Then, I'm gonna have to check the map. Is this actually a chapel of some sort? No. Is this where we've been already? Doesn't look like it. We have... Okay, the camera's moving out a bit. So, this is a, this is a bit of a village. That this... Did this pop something? I'm gonna have to go out and, and in again. Is this a village with a name? No, it doesn't seem like it. Attention! In light of recent events in the Mulderwood, I hereby order the following. Representatives of the elder races caught consorting with the Squiatel shall be executed without trial, together with their families and their belongings confiscated. Together with their families? Okay then. Representatives of the elder races are forbidden to leave their dwellings after dark on penalty of lashing. Taxes for representatives of the elder races shall be increased threefold until further notice. That last one seems a bit weird. Bronimir County. So this is Bronimir then, I suppose. So let's check this out. Gives us two more question marks to check out. I'm just gonna go across the river here first. So, a dwarf and an elf. Meave's path took her to the village of Eichenfurt. Unlike most settlements in the area, not a single human dwelled here. Instead, only elves and dwarves sat on its porches and stared at the passing Lyrians with clear aversion. Not a single greeting was extended to their allies in arms. Not a single peddler tried to hawk their wares. The only sound was that of snapping shutters and slamming doors. Something's amiss, Rayla said, furrowing her brow. Order a halt, my lady, and give me a moment to look around. Okay, so... Of course, we just saw the rules uh, dictated by the county, so Eichenfurt is part of Bronomir County. 
but I convert is inhabited by elves and dwarves, so they're all under the influence of those rules we just read about. Let Rayla take a look around. I think we should march on. Because Rayla has a short a short fuse. And she has something against non-humans, so we're gonna there march on. There are skeletons all. in the cellars of every village. Meave replied calmly, pretending to ignore Rayla's angry glare. I doubt this is an exception. But I feel no need to exhume them. We march on. There we go. We still have a question mark. So, driven by curiosity, the queen returned to Eichenfurt. Black Rayla implored her to call for a halt so they could search the village. Okay, so we can continuously do this. And I feel like the effect is not... Because otherwise, if it's a hard decision, this would probably disappear. You have a quarter of an hour, Meave said as she dismounted. And not a moment more. The queen sat in the shade of a large pear tree. She shut her eyes and listened to the chirping of crickets in the grass, savoring a rare moment of relaxation. But the calm did not last. Within moments, one of her scouts returned, a certain Sergeant Niedermere. Tears streamed down his weathered, scar-pocked face. A lady, I... come with us, please. You'll need to see this for yourself. The sergeant led her to the still smoldering remains of a mill. Okay. The soldiers were picking things out from the ashes. When she got closer, she realized in horror they were human skulls. Some no larger than apples. Tell the villagers to gather by the well. The queen said in a strained voice. Or be executed. Oh, for fuck's sake. The elves and dwarves attempted no denials. They admitted Eldane and his Goyatel had helped them round up all the humans in their village, march them into the mill, then set it aflame. They stole our land. Jesus they Christ. They beat us. Murdered us and bloodthirsty pogroms, shouted one of the dwarves. They had it coming to them. Got their comeuppance, I'd say. Meave was no stranger to the cruelty of war. But the enormous evil she found in Eichenfurt overwhelmed her. She felt a terrible weight on her chest, found it hard to draw breath, and her head spun. She felt she could hear the cries of humans being burned alive. Ma'am, whispered Raynard, you must... You must pronounce something. Or simply turn the matter over to me, Your Grace. Rayla interrupted. I know what to do. Have the non-humans escorted to the nearest city? I think we just lost recruits. Did we just lose recruits? I think we did. Or let Rayla punish them as she sees fit. Well, for once... I feel like the horrors that have been committed here do warrant this a severe punishment, so let Rayla punish them as she sees fit. Do as you see fit. Meave said quietly, gaze fixed on the ground. The queen snapped her reins and rode out of the village. She did not want to witness the bloody massacre of non-humans her soldiers were about to perpetrate. What she had seen at the mill already sufficed to keep her awake for many nights to come. Yeah. Wow. This is getting darker and darker, isn't it? So, they just... It was not just the village that was inhabited by elves and dwarves. There were humans here as well. But they just, they just sent them to the mill. And I'm going to assume that this is that mill. And they just burned everybody alive. Children and women included. There's... Yeah, there was just no need for that. And... Yeah, I know we just made it worse. We just killed everybody now. Everybody's dead, which is... Because usually there's a bit of music playing behind this, but right now it's eerie, eerie silence. So let's, uh, let's get out of here and move forward to the north. Damn, this game is harsh sometimes. Oh! Somebody's fighting monsters! It's Nilf Guardians! Meat and thin cans. What, what was that? Meave asked Reynard, who rode beside her. A scream. A man's, I think. Need to investigate. Gather a few men and we ride. Quickly! The screaming came from a small settlement. When Meave rode up to its farmhouses, her horse reared and neighed in terror. Necrophages swarmed all around. 
the monsters surrounded a few Nilfgaardians who were trying, with no success, to chase them off with torches. Reynard swept his gaze over the carnage and said, They cannot stave them off, and their armor is too heavy for them to flee. Hmm. Save the Nilfgaardians or leave the Nilfgaardians to their fate. Well, at least for X's sake, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna save the Nilfgaardians because he just wants to kill monsters. Eve was uncertain at first how to act. But when she saw Ghoul snatch one of the Nilf Guardians and rip him to shreds, she drew her sword. No one deserves such a death. Not even a Nilf Guardian. Follow me! And I mean, the Nilf Guardians soldiers themselves are just following orders. In defense of the enemy, if told at the war's outbreak, Meave would one day stand in defense of Nilf Guardian troops, risking the lives of her own soldiers, she'd have given a hearty laugh. And yet, the Queen had now found herself in that very situation. As she looked at the ghoul's fangs dribbling with foul spittle, she wondered whether she had made the correct decision. Whatever her conclusion, the opportunity to retreat had already long passed. So we, short, we have a shortened battle, but we have extra cards for some reason. Interesting. Don't think we generally need extra cards, but... Um, maybe get rid of the Marana runestone. Gascon is not necessary either. No Sipman, no Sipman. Nickus and Nickus out of there as well. Okay, never mind. We're here to rescue you. This evil I shall trample out root and branch. Well, sadly, we don't have egg in our hand at the moment, so we're gonna have to do this without egg. And yeah, what are these guys gonna do? Giso Footman on round one start appear on the battlefield after four turns on turn start. Duel the lowest enemy. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, let's put the row on fire as a start. Watch your heads. <laughs> Over there. I ah, should have should have done that on the back row, but never mind. What are these guys gonna do? Every turn, two turns on turn starts, consume the top unit from your graveyard. Never mind, I'm gonna Why just. Why do you help us? Yeah, good question. I'm gonna put the stray slingers down and get all of those units on the fiery row. There we go. And let them burn. Burn they shall. Okay, there we go. More necrophages. And then we can use... I'm actually going to use the Wagenberg now. Um, let's use the Wagenberg. Use Meave on the sixes. There we go. And we can end the turn. But in the next turn, those guys are going to duel the lowest enemies. Which is fine, because we created a few low enemies. There we go. And Neckers are going down. So remember, this is only one round. Assume the top unit from your graveyard. Those take out two more Neckers. Let the ghouls eat them, I say. Silence! The Queen has made her decision. Um, so they don't do anything else. Which is interesting. So let's spawn the light infantry. And get more... Ooh, get more armor. That's, of course, very interesting as well. Uh, and end the turn. So those Neckers are going to keep coming. And those two Necrophages are going to keep boosting themselves as well, which is annoying. But uh, let's get the Foragers in play. I only One right over here and destroy those two light infantry dudes and damage them further. Consume the highest units from your graveyard and damage an enemy by one every time. Uh, those gates of footmen aren't really going to help me anymore. So let's just get. I have a really bad hand at the moment. Not sure for what yet. Forager down. And the turn. Why are they all getting boosted? What the hell happened there?
What boosted all those units? I don't really get that, but... Must have been something he consumed. We have four damage with the Wagenberg on this entire row if you want to. So we're going to keep that definitely. Uh, then we have the Forager over here next to the Geso Footman. Uh, bit of a bad placement there, but let's just take those Geso Footman. Don't think there's going to be any story repercussion for that. Why are they getting healed? I don't, I don't get why they're getting healed. Summon an echo from your deck or boost self by one if this row is full. Oh. That's a new one. Um, two sevens, three sixes. Yeah, four sixes. I'm going to use Meave on the sixes there. There we go. Then we get... Maybe even the Lyrian Horn to clear that row a bit. Let me get Nikki's out of there as well. Oh, that might be a problem. But Reynards in the next turn. And those get boosted because they consume stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be in a bit of a pickle here. The top unit from your graveyard, but the graveyard is almost empty. But I don't think I, I will be able to take out all that, all those things. Because um, Reynard is just going to give us an extra Her Majesty is charge. Exceptional. Ah, I should have done the Wagenberg first. Yeah, of course. Yeah, stupid. That's my mistake. That's my mistake. Let's take Nickers and the Artifact. And then use the... Forager to destroy those two. And then we can actually just wait one more turn. And then damage the entire row there. So I'm going to damage the back row. Because the back row is going to add more damage to that row. Because the Rot Fiends are going to die. There we go. Another Rot Fiend is going to die. There we go. And another one. And another one. There we go. So that takes out that entire row. And then if we use the Lyrian Merlot, we boost the Wagenberg up to that one for a juice. Power. And I, but I think we're still going to lose. Because we just filled the graveyard, of course. With units. And they, they, they just keep getting cards in hand. Which is... I'm, I'm not going to win this. No. Yeah, we're definitely not going to win this. I think I'm going to have to restart this. Or not. Wow, we it just won that barely. That was... That was tense. Because we had a really bad hand with all those foragers and not really anything useful as we usually have. fought the monsters side by side. A united force. But when the last necrophage fell, the soldiers immediately returned to their respective divisions. Meave's soldiers looked at the invaders askance, uncertain what would happen next. Suddenly, one of the Nilfgaardians broke ranks and fell to his knees. Your Grace, I know you have no reason to trust us, but we are not enemies. We hail from Geso, a land Nilfgaard conquered and made its province. We did not ask to fight in this war by force. We were conscripted. The soldier hefted his sword by the blade and handed it, hilt first, to the queen. We yearned for a way to desert, and we have found it. Your grace, allow us to join your army. We long for the Empire's defeat every bit as much as you do. Okay. So the soldiers are not going to like that. But we do have a... They have a bit of a point. They were here on their own, so they weren't alongside their division. So they most likely already deserted. Because they're just normal soldiers. They don't look like spies in, in any way. So I'm going to let them join our army? Yeah, this is going to be another one of those decisions that are going to bite me in the ass Neve later. But... The, kneeling soldier to his feet. the enemy of Nilfgaard is my friend. No matter who he is or whence he hail. The Lyrians were clearly displeased with their queen's decision. The black-clad deserters from Geso would need to earn their trust. Indeed. 
So we get the Geso Footman and a Geso Arbalest. Um, and we did lose morale. Okay, I was just going to say we're going to lose morale for that one. Uh, which is not that bad. I'm actually going to check that out. So the Geso Footman and Arbalests. If I'm not mistaken, I think the Arbalests can do damage every turn, right? Loyal, damage a random enemy by two. So that's the same. Is it, isn't that the same as my Arbalest? Damage a random enemy nearest to self by two. On round one, start, appear on the battlefield. Oh, so they're just, they're just on the battlefield. That is interesting. And they have loyal abilities. On the round one, start, appear on the battlefield, or remove this unit to your deck, then summon a random unit from your deck to a random allied row. Interesting. So we get a free unit, so to speak. Or we get random damage dealing. And since it just pulled out of the deck anyway, I feel like I can fill that up with some more interesting units. The problem is I want to... On the, on the one hand, I want restrict, to restrict how many units I have in my deck. On the other hand, of course, some of these units are really, really interesting. So th I think I'm going to try it out with just one Gaso Arbalest, which I still have room for. And see how that's going to work. But with that decision, of course, we're still, we're back to uh, low morale, but I see a chapel over there. So we might be able to get ourselves to higher morale. So just the middle morale, which is fine for me. Oh, it actually ends here as well. Is that a, is that a dead unicorn? What the hell is that? Okay, is that the stuffed unicorn from Yennefer? Because, um... Yennefer hails from, so the, the girlfriend from Geralt, the the lover from Geralt from uh, the main games, is called Yennefer, just in case you don't know that. Uh, and she uh, has an aff affection for a stuffed unicorn she has, on which she regularly, um, well, has sex with Geralt on. But she, she hails from Vengerberg, and Vengerberg is a city located in Edirne, which is the the land that we're at right now. Which would make sense that that's that same stuffed unicorn then. But we'll see in a second. We're gonna head north now because we're done with this uh, area. So all the way back around we're going through the elven ruins where we fought Eldane's uh, band of Squiatel. Uh, this looks like... You know, kinda looked like a secret passageway. But uh, we're gonna oh, go the long last. way around. I'd begun to think this wood had no end. And I thought bandits knew their way around a wood. We do. Around those not brimming with elves, arms at sea. He has a point. Uh, this seems like an open barn I can't do anything with. There's more resources over there. And I feel like this spot down here also is treadable. But I wonder why. Because it doesn't seem to... Oh. Oh. No. No. Okay. It doesn't seem to be anything here. Just the other way. The other side of that dam. So we're entering another... Ooh! What is that? I would say it looks like a troll, but... It's a purple troll. Let's have a little chat with him. Or, yeah, fight with him. Aha! The she-troll! A she-troll's fury! I've come across many trolls in my travels. Some were friendly, eager to lend aid. Others, such as the one Meave encountered in War Torn Eddard, viewed humans differently. As, say, a tasty ingredient for soup. Eliminate the she-troll and keep all your allies alive. In a puzzle battle. So, the she-troll of Vergen is that card, if I'm not mistaken. Because that's one card that's also in Gwent. Uh, okay, thank you for that. Then the she troll. If humans earth troll, bad bad troll makes strange glowy stick go zap. Okay, but we need to kill. We need to kill the she troll. But the scepter of storms damage the lowest units by three. Repeat this ability until all charges are depleted. Every turn on turn start increase charge count by one. But I need to keep my allies alive. My allies are of course. Wait. What do they mean with that? Yeah, we're going to use the Wagenberg. And the turn. Then... Boosts. I should have used the Grey Rider first. Let's start that again. Let's start that again. So there's two Grey Riders. 
Uh, we're gonna put them on the back row. As you command. Naturally. At once. Then use the Wagenberg. Those grey riders are gonna boost them by one. Uh, then... And the turn. So those two are moved to that area. Then we can damage... Hmm. Because Reynard only gives charges to units with depleted. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So if I move the war wagon over here... Vettles, hungry like a wolf those two are going to boost the war wagon. And I can end the turn. Then I can use the light infantry... To move over here then move that over here and play the war wagon on the lower row you can to move the, the grey riders back you again uh, and the, the, the turn then use the light in the so that thing has six charges at the moment uh, then move the light infantry again. Which moves the light infant the, the grey riders as well. And that. And then I should... I can do 10 damage. But then I die. So that's failure, yeah, okay. So I think I'm going to have to alternate more. So first up, set the wagon. No, set the true, the two gray. No, the two gray riders are going to be important as well, I think. So Raynard is a weird. I think we need to use Raynard to remove those light infantry units. So let's use the Wagenberg first. Because I want to boost it's armors to the maximum I can get it. So if I then put the Grey Riders Without next hesitation. to it, I can get two armor, As you which can. I didn't have before. Then end the turn. Then we can use the War Wagon take to do this. To get them to move over there and the turn. Then we move one of these over there. Play the war wagon over here. Tiny battles, hungry like a wolf. That yeah. moves the war, the grey riders back over here. Move the light infantry over there, and that puts it up to eight. Then we can end the turn. Then, but I need to do that in one turn, don't I? So if I do. Reynard now. Yeah, Reynard now. We must trust each other. The Grey Riders go down. Then we move a light infantry unit over there. The Grey Riders move back there. We move a light infantry unit over there. The Grey Riders move back again. Then the light infantry unit over there. And then we have 14. So I'm still missing something. So let's retry that again. So let's put Reynard on this row. Her Majesty knows what she's doing. So the Grey Riders move. We get up to 13. We move one light infantry unit down below. One up. That's three again. I'm gonna I'm gonna be one short. Are you kidding me? What am I missing? So that's one, two, three, and we get the 19. That's yeah, that's not enough. I can do that, but. There we go, defeat. So, another try. Let's go with the Grey Riders yes. as we started out before. Then, instead of putting the War Wagon next to the Wagenberg, because we're kind of missing an extra move, but one more point as well. So, if we put the Wagenberg here first, we do pull the Grey Riders back. Then, if we pull one of those light infantry units over there, we get this situation. Then, if we put the war wagon over here you can try to win them all we get eight more won't. and the turn then we get one we can pull over here one we can pull over there 
and that one we can pull back there and I think I made a better equilibrium than I did before so now we can use Rainer to put those is... yeah we're done we're done this is it okay so we, you need to put one of the Wagenbergs down first so you can spread out the light infantry units better and now we can do this which brings us up to 17 which is perfect because when we move our last light infantry unit on the metal road down and put the last one on the range row back up we get up to 20 and we can finally take out the sheet roll of Vergen. there we go oh my god that was yeah you didn't have any other options than to do it that way because i tried a few things but uh there we go the scepter of storms this that sounds cool that sounds really really good Hi, sheet roll this no good hole in bridgey now when bridgey bad humans no go no go on bridgey, no pay shinies. No pay shinies, humans only good for soupy soup. Splashy, splashy. Okay, so um, what we learned today is that the sheet roll can actually write as well, the same way she can, she can talk. I'm actually going to check out the scepter before we end the episode. So let's check it out in the command tent. There we go. Because it sounds like something... Ooh, it's an artifact. Permanent Resilience. Order. Damage the lowest enemy unit by 2. Repeat until charges are depleted. Every turn on turn start. Increase charge count by 1 on the round and set charges to 0. Interesting. It's really cool, but as long as we have Egg, I feel like the Manticore Trophy is going to be better. Because uh, it damages anything by 2 anyway. And this only has 1 per turn. Which, if the if the if our opponent plays more units, we just get more out of the Manticore Trophy anyway. So, aside from the fact that it's random between one or two, but still. I feel like the benefit we get from the Manticore Trophy, along with Egg, is just better than this. Okay. But still, nice addition, nice addition. And with that done, I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys as normally for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like it right here on YouTube. Because I do hope you enjoyed it. And next time, we're going to go... Uh, well, I think we might be able to reach the city and the end of the other map. So uh, looking forward to that. So thanks again and normally for watching. And I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Goodbye. Yeah,